I just wanted to do a few little uh, tech stories, possibly. I don't know if they're tech stories, but uh, there's something I found fairly interesting going on, so I'll share them with you, if you don't mind. Sapphire has released an Unlock RX 460 to the Chinese market. Oh, I thought this would be over here. When AMD released the RX 460 GPU, they decided to release it with only 14 of the GPU's 16 compute units, actively reducing the GPU's core stream process count from 1024 to 896, which is a decrease in 12.5% in performance. Now Sapphire has decided to release an RX 460 to the Chinese market, unlocking the GPU's 128 extra GPU cores to offer that additional 12% of performance. If you recall, I did something on this a little while ago where AMD, AMD gave a, a BIOS update or something like that, or driver update that allowed some users, only two brands, I believe it was XFX and Sapphire, to unlock its potential and get back this 12.5%. This new GPU will also come with four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, allowing to take advantage of the high resolution textures in modern games, which is awesome. And two gigabytes is just, it, whatever you do, do not get a graphics card two gigabytes anymore, unless you absolutely positively can't afford better then that's understandable. This comes just a few months after the pro overclocking Jir Ajer, I, I don't know how to read this guy's name, forgive me, discovered that he could unlock the RX 480's extra GPU cores with a custom BIOS update, in theory delivering back the 12.5% performance boost that we talked about in budget-oriented GPUs. Combined with this and custom overclocking, the end users will have a huge performance gain in AMD's reference RX 460. Remember, you do this, it will void your warranty unless, like, you are given BIOS updates from the board partner. Like all GPU BIOS updates and major firmware changes, this upgrade places your GPU at risk, with BIOS flashing having the potential to damage your GPU, and without any guarantee that your GPU's unlock hardware will function properly. AMD locked down the RX 460 for a reason with most RX 460 GPUs either having non-functional GPU cores or due to other reasons like power consumption or low yields. At this time, the BIOS updates have only been created for ASUS's RX 460 Strix 4GB and Sapphire's RX 460 Nitro 4GB. Although it is unlikely that more BIOS updates will become available to additional GPU SKUs soon. Sorry for those of you who have asked me about that. This pretty much covers it completely. Let's move on to the next one that I thought was pretty interesting. This is actually going to be pretty fucking sick. This is legit, actually. Intel's Pentium G4560 KB Lake CPU is faster than the FX6300, and it's just $65. And it's on par for i5-2500K and an i3-6100. So this is going to be the new king of the bargain bin CPUs. Before, it used to be the... AMD FX 46. Why am I going to say 4690K? I'm sorry. It, before it was the AMD FX 6300. I've built many computers with that bargain brand CPU. Though it isn't bad, it isn't exactly amazing. I mean, I was getting bottlenecks with an SLI for a 760 setup. This right here is awesome. And it's $65. Perfect for a budget build. Totally perfect. Awesome. I wish I knew this was out. Or maybe it just came out recently because I don't keep up with Pentium. But if I knew it was out, this would have been the CPU I would have used on the bargain PC I was building for a friend. Intel's G4560 is part of KB Lake's family of processors which were launched at CES 2017. The lineup includes several Pentium and Core series processors. The Pentium G4560 is $64 US processor, which is placed in the lineup that may not look like much until we get the specifications of this part. All right, the CPU comes with clock speeds of 3.5 gigahertz and a base frequency, but there's no boost clocks. The chip series is a three megabyte L3 catch and has a TDP of 40, uh, 54 watts. The processor also packs the latest HD graphics, 610 clocked and 1150, 1150 megahertz. Uh, all that doesn't matter. I mean, you're not really grabbing these CPUs for their onboard graphics, but let's put it like this. The value for the money is amazing it is this is like the cpu for me i'd say i mean this is the cpu for bargain building all right the intel's g4560 performs and benchmarks it's faster than the fx6300 which we've already said it's on par with the i3 6100 skylake 
and it's on par with the i5 2500K Sandy Bridge. And there's a lot of people still using the i5 2500K Sandy Bridge for modding gaming today. So right there, it, it, it's a no-brainer. This is fantastic news for people who want to get into building computers or who want to have a PC build, but they're afraid of prices and they can't find like a good medium point. This is it right here. In applications and performance, this CPU is 15% faster than the FX6300, which comes in at $90. It is 21% faster than the Pentium G4400, and that's $60. And it's 23% faster than an A10 7890K, which is $149. 23% faster. I built a friend, a female friend, a budget build PC with that APU in it. Not a bad APU, honestly but it was nothing to write home about in my opinion, but it was better than I thought it was. Um, let's see, for gaming performance at 1080p, this is 16% faster than the 6300K. It is 26% faster than the Pentium G4400, and it's 26% faster the A10 7890K. Really, I could go on verbatim. Wait a second. Well, I'll be fucking damn, check this out. 980Ti SLI, the Core i5 6700K, 55.60 frames, so 55 frames. Uh, let's see, 6500K, oh sorry, the i5 6500, 54.8 frames, they're damn near identical, really. And the Pentium G4560, 54.7 frames. So essentially this thing is hanging 10 with some damn fine CPUs from Intel, with some i5s. That's, wow, really, this is great. I, th I thought I'd share that just in case somebody wanted to get into building a computer. This might be perfect for them. And I will move on to something that maybe not too many people give a shit about, but I figured why not. Western Digital launches its 12 terabyte and 14 terabyte helium filled hard drives, which will be available in both SAS and SATA versions for both consumer and enterprise users. The new 12 terabyte HGST sub brand of Western Digital which I really do like those uh, hard drives. They, they're very respected. Ultrastar HE12 series has already started shipping with eight drive patterns that spin at 7,200 RPMs to offer some fast read and write speeds for the mechanical drive. The 14 terabyte HGST Ultrastar drive will be shipped later this year using the same eight platter design and the RPM speed, but will offer larger capacities by using shingled magnetic recording. Both drives will feature a 256 megabyte of cache, eight millisecond seek and read times, and 8.6 millisecond seek times or writes. Shingled magnetic recording technology can be used to increase storage capacities by 25% by slightly overlapping newly written magnetic tracks. SMR technology will increase drive capacity but reduce the drive's write speeds, making the drive less suitable to use in cases which require lots of data writes. In theory, Western Digital can use their shingled magnetic storage technology to increase their drive capacity further, though this will have a large effect on the drive's write speeds. This will allow drives that are up to 16 terabytes in size to be manufactured, which is an insane storage capacity for an HDZ hard drive. Although this sounds amazing, I'm guessing that this is only really plausible for people running servers to have hard drives of this size and capacity. Though I would like to own one simply because of the sheer volume that is there, I don't think that it's quite practical. Now I did do some research back when I was in the market for a new hard drive. I was looking into possibly a four terabyte, but from what I was reading, many people were saying that Windows couldn't exactly handle four terabytes of storage for reading and writing constantly and so on and so forth. There could be data loss and such, and the sweet spot was usually two terabytes. Three was pushing, at four, you would probably get in trouble. And I will admit that I did have a huge issue with the four terabyte hard drive in my PC when I was using a Seagate. There was a lot of data corruption there, and sometimes, like, it would cause my computer to crash. I don't even know how it happened, but it, it just did. And from that on, I, point on, I was just done with Seagate in general. I just, just, just like forget it. And I got an HT, HGTC, like in the story, I probably got the name wrong. But I got one of their two terabyte hard drives and I've had zero issues with it. I've had zero issues with one terabyte hard drives. So I don't know if it's true that Windows has an issue with anything over that or not. Uh, if you know better than me, feel free to say so. 
I should probably Google this and look deeper into it, but I figure there should be some sort of realm of honesty between us, that I am not infallible, nor do I know everything, nor am I some sort of cute computer or modding god. I am just some douchebag with a microphone. Oh well, uh, that should probably do it for me. I just found these stories interesting. Uh, definitely the CPU. The CPU was the big one, the G4560. Like, perfect budget build CPU. The next time someone hits me up like, I want to build a cheap PC, I'm like, get that CPU, dude. Like, there's no more of me trying to, like, tell them, well, you're probably gonna have to go with an i5 if you want performance and long-lasting, you know. And, or usually, like, this is before Vega, I used to say that, but now that Vega's coming, I just tell people, sit back, wait for fucking Vega, we'll see what, what goes on there before we make a move. Uh, let's see. And the Sapphire RX 460 unlocking, I think that's cool. Hopefully this makes it from China to America, fingers crossed, but who knows. And that'll do it. Anyway, uh, feel free to rate, comment, subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. I can no longer ask anyone on Earth to give more of a fuck than me. You know, that's my my new creed, creed in life. You know, I'm going to look people in the face and they're going to go, I need advice on life. And I'm just going to look at them and I'm going to be like, I can't ask you to give more of a fuck than me. And they're going to be like, that dude's fucking Jesus. <laughs> All right, he just stopped before so he gets pissed off and doesn't get my humor. Uh, yeah, adios pichachos.